Imagine stepping into a world where the colossal woolly mammoth roams the Arctic tundra once again. A world where the past and the present intertwine. Today, we're exploring the ambitious endeavor to bring back the woolly mammoth that will be happening in 2027, a project that is much more than a scientific spectacle. It's a venture that opens a window into the fascinating life of these prehistoric giants, delves into the cutting-edge science of de-extinction, and poses profound questions about what other ancient creatures will science bring back. Will we see a Jurassic Park-style zoo in our lifetime? Reality to this is closer than you think. The year 2027 marks a pivotal moment in a biotech company's bold initiative to resurrect the woolly mammoth, an endeavor that intertwines the threads of advanced genetics, climate change, mitigation, and ecological restoration. This project transcends the realms of science fiction and academic curiosity, aiming to reintroduce these prehistoric giants into the Arctic tundra. The core idea is deeply rooted in ecological conservation, with the mammoth revival seen as a potential key to reinstating the disrupted balance of the Arctic ecosystem. Woolly mammoths, the colossal creatures that wandered across the Earth until their extinction around 4,000 years ago, played a significant role in their habitats. Their activities, such as uprooting trees and trampling snow, helped maintain vast stretches of Arctic grasslands. These grasslands, in turn, played a crucial role in preserving permafrost and maintaining the region's cold temperatures. The company's plan involves a cutting-edge process called gene editing, where specific genes from the woolly mammoth are inserted into the genome of its closest living relative, the Asian elephant. The goal is to engineer an elephant-mammoth hybrid that exhibits key mammoth traits such as long, shaggy hair, thick layers of fat, and blood adapted to cold temperatures. These traits are not just for superficial resemblance, they are crucial for the animal's survival in the harsh Arctic climate. The woolly mammoth, a prehistoric behemoth, once roamed the vast icy landscapes of the Earth during the late Pleistocene epoch, leaving a legacy that fascinates scientists and laypeople alike. This magnificent creature was superbly adapted to survive in the harsh climates of the Ice Age. One of the most defining characteristics of the woolly mammoth was its size. Adult males could reach heights of up to four meters at the shoulder and weigh as much as six to eight tons, making them one of the largest mammals to have walked the Earth. Their colossal tusks, which could grow over three meters long, were not just for show. They were used for a variety of purposes, including fighting, foraging under deep snow for vegetation and manipulating objects in their environment. The mammoth's most iconic feature, however, was its thick, shaggy coat of hair. This coat consisted of a dense underfur topped with long, coarse guard hairs, providing the insulation needed to survive the extreme cold. Beneath its woolly exterior, the mammoth had a layer of fat up to 10 centimeters thick, which acted as an additional shield against the cold. Another fascinating aspect of the woolly mammoth was its teeth. Unlike modern elephants, mammoths had a high-crowned tooth with numerous ridges. Perfect for grinding tough tundra grasses and other vegetation, these teeth were replaced six times during a mammoth's life, with the final set having to last for the rest of its lifespan. Mammoths were social animals, believed to live in matriarchal herds, much like modern elephants. Herds were likely led by an experienced female and comprised other females and their young, while adult males may have lived solitary lives or in smaller bachelor groups. Their extinction around 4,000 years ago remains a subject of study and debate among scientists. While it is widely accepted that a combination of climate change and overhunting by humans played a significant role, the science of de-extinction, particularly as it applies to the woolly mammoth, stands at the cutting edge of genetic technology. At its core, de-extinction involves reviving extinct species. This technology allows scientists to make precise targeted changes to the DNA of living organisms. In the context of the woolly mammoth, scientists are using CRISPR to edit the genes of its closest living relative, the Asian elephant, by inserting mammoth genes responsible for adaptations to cold environments. The process starts with mapping the woolly mammoth's genome, pieced together from well-preserved DNA found in mammoth remains extracted from the permafrost. Researchers identify key genes responsible for the mammoth's distinctive traits, 
These genes are then artificially synthesized and inserted into the genome of an Asian elephant in a way that they replace the elephant's original genes. The modified DNA is then used to create an embryo. However, rather than using a living elephant as a surrogate to gestate the embryo, scientists plan to develop the embryo in an artificial womb. This approach circumvents numerous ethical and logistical challenges. Despite the sophistication of the technology, the de-extinction of the woolly mammoth is fraught with challenges. The process is not just about splicing genes, but ensuring that the resulting creature can survive and thrive in modern ecosystems. There are questions about the animal's health, longevity, and ability to adapt, as well as broader ecological considerations. For instance, would these creatures be vulnerable to modern diseases and how would they interact with existing species and ecosystems? The reintroduction of the woolly mammoth to the modern ecosystem is anticipated to be more than a mere scientific marvel. It's expected to play a pivotal role in ecological restoration. In the Pleistocene era, woolly mammoths were not just inhabitants of their environment, but active participants in shaping it. These enormous creatures, often referred to as ecosystem engineers, significantly influenced the landscapes they roamed. One of the mammoth's primary ecological roles involved the maintenance of vast grasslands in the Arctic region known as the Mammoth Steppe. By grazing, they kept the grasslands free of encroaching trees and shrubs, promoting a rich and diverse ecosystem. The mammoth's ability to clear dead vegetation and uproot trees was essential in fostering grassland expansion. Moreover, mammoths played a significant role in nutrient cycling. As they moved and foraged, they dispersed seeds and nutrients through their dung, facilitating plant growth and distribution. This nutrient dispersal helped maintain the health and diversity of the grasslands. In terms of their impact on the soil, mammoths helped aerate it with their tusks and feet, improving soil quality and promoting plant growth. In the modern context, the hypothesis is that reintroducing mammoths or mammoth-like hybrids could help restore the Arctic grasslands, which have diminished considerably since the Pleistocene. These animals could potentially help turn tundra back into grasslands. This transformation is significant because grasslands can store more carbon than forests in colder climates, thus potentially reducing the effects of climate change. This process could not only help preserve these environments, but could also serve as a natural and sustainable way to mitigate some impacts of climate change. The ambitious project to resurrect the woolly mammoth is just the tip of the iceberg in the burgeoning field of de-extinction. However, beyond the technical challenges, these initiatives raise important ecological, ethical and philosophical questions. Scientists must consider how reintroduced species would fit into modern ecosystems that have evolved in their absence and how they would interact with existing species. There are also concerns about the welfare of the resurrected animals and the potential unintended consequences of reintroducing species into the wild. Furthermore, the field of de-extinction prompts a broader discussion about conservation priorities and the allocation of resources. Some argue that the focus should be on protecting endangered species and preserving habitats rather than resurrecting extinct ones. Others see de-extinction as an innovative way to rejuvenate ecosystems and a powerful tool for raising awareness about biodiversity loss. And as always, we hope you enjoyed our video today. Thanks for watching and let us know any ideas down below.